Welcome back, everybody, to the League of Inches podcast. Tuesday night recording, so that means it is a super coach episode. And whenever I've got Jesse next to him, it's just me and him. It is just the two. I was going to say the Einsteins, but I'm the stooge at the moment, and he's back with the actual um, champion hat on that he proudly was gloating about in the off season. And I'll tell you what, it's getting a bit scary being up against him, as you guys will see in the post that comes out. Uh, this week he's starting to make some moves and I'm very, very nervous. But as we always do, last weekend it was a mess to say politely. I think there was three players a lot, mate. Was it three that finished on negative or uh, maybe two? And I had one of those players in my team, luckily. Um, one I didn't, but I know people who had him as a, as a captain as well. So that was just a double edged sword. Having Dom Young as your, your captain was just mm. brutal. Horrible. Um, and then, yeah, just some of the, the big ones like May and for the Roosters didn't get his second stint as normal, scored like a 20. Um, I just had a bit of a shit show. My total all up was 907. Now, before the updates, I was sitting on like 880 or something, and it was not looking good. Still doesn't look good, but at least I'm in the 900 mark. So I've quickly gone downhill, guys. I'm sitting now my rank 38,787. So not ideal at all, um, but Jesse was here a couple of weeks ago, so I can fight myself, <laughs> find myself back up. I've got to make some big changes this week, and you'll see a little bit later on that means some big plays, and I am looking at a boost this week just to, to really solidify. I didn't want to, but the last two weeks have been dog shit, so I've got to do something. Jesse, it was a weekend of carnage. Did you get to avoid a lot of it, or were you stuck in it? and? Just how you um, go with it. You, you, you're climbing. It's scary. Yeah, I avoided most of it. I didn't have Young or Walker or Teddy. Um, so I sort of, you know, avoided that. But stupid me started playing with my trades after the team list reveals coming out for the, before the game. And um, I saw Tupanua got put back into the starting lineup. And I was looking at it thinking, okay, I still want Pierce Paul in, but Tupanua... You know, rainy game, up against the dogs. He's got a pretty good chance of doing something with a really low break even. I brought him back in. And then uh, Pierce Paul locked out. And then I was thinking, wait a minute. I don't know if I'm set. Who else can I go if not um, Tupanua? And reluctantly, I ended up having to trade out Fermor. And I hate myself for it. He ended up going over for a try. It was a big game for him. And I still have Tupanua. So I, I, I'm not happy with it. But... Overall, it was actually a decent You're week. human. Yeah. Um, it was something that was on the cards anyway, and I thought I can do it now and I can do Tupanua next week, but I probably wouldn't trade Fermor if I still had him this week. So I scored 1170. Um, I actually climbed up almost 20,000 spots, so I'm sitting at rank 19,039. So it was a big jump. Um had a few players go up in cash, and the score was good overall. It could have been much better um, if I kept on to Fermor, if I played Ethan Strange like most people. But you know what? Considering some of the carnage that was out there, I think I'll take it. So, yeah, better than um, honestly, better than every week. So every week so far, I've actually outscored the previous week. So going off that trend, I should get more than eleven seventy. But we'll see. It was a good round for me. You're just starting to rub my snoz in it now. It's oh, it could have been better, mate. It's literally smashed me by like 230 <laughs> points or something. Oh, it could, it could have been better still. Right, could have been, could have been 400. Right, champ. <laughs> oh, well. Um, look, guys, we are doing it a little bit different uh, tonight and moving forward with this video. So we're going to do the t uh, team list Tuesday. Still talk about the team list, but each game we're going to actually then talk about the super coach aspect of things as we go. So, and then trades right at the end and everything that you guys have sent through, we will discuss and our own trades. That way we're just keeping this video to a much more super coach focused video where we still tell you guys about the key ins and outs, but we will talk to you more so about the super coach side of things. So I'll say the team list and then Jesse will come in as the super coach champion, as the expert, uh, and let us know about any of sort of the big BEs or the, the players to get because they're very low BEs, maybe players on runs, et cetera, like that as well. Just we'll try and cover everything for you match to match. So uh, first one, Newcastle Knights, Thursday night clash. 
Uh, for the Newcastle Knights, uh, no changes at all for the team that won last weekend. Very convincing, I thought, in those conditions against the St. George Illawarra Dragons. Their kicking game was immense, so credit to them. Kalen Ponga, very, very scary at the moment. I, I, I'm going to guess Jesse going to say something about him for a super coach thing, so um, I'll wait till then. But, yeah, no changes at all to the Newcastle Knights lineup. For the Roosters, uh, quite a bit to, to go through here. They got absolutely smashed on the weekend, um, not just on the field by the Bulldogs, especially that first half. They obviously did come back in the second half, but with the injuries and the like. Um, so James Tedesco and Sam Walker are both out. Joey Manu switches to fullback. Luke Heary will go to halfback with Connor Watson, the starting 5'8". The back line, uh, Michael Jennings actually comes into the centres, so he'll start for his 300 game. There's obviously a lot being said about him and that 300 game, which we won't talk about here. We'll probably talk about tonight on the Wednesday night show. I'm saying tonight will upload, obviously. Uh, so if you do have a, an opinion on that one, make sure you join us uh, tomorrow night at 8.30 uh, it is for this at this stage uh, to talk all things um, rugby league, and it's a live show, obviously. Um, so Ali stays at centre, and they bring Pauga back on the wing as well. Um, surprisingly, Tupo, Tupo is the only guy sort of still there, uh, hasn't moved, so he's still plotting along. Um, in the forwards, it looks like they've actually got away with pretty much everything in the forwards. Uh, Statili Tupanoa is on the bench for the Roosters. He's, he's uh, been benched there, but Crichton keeps his starting spot with Nat Butcher, so it seems like that's the way they're going to go, at least for the short term. I don't lock anything in there at the moment because the Roosters forwards are just so up and down. And hopefully, as I said, Terrell May gets a little bit more minutes this week as an owner who starts him. I really need that second stint um, or at least that 40-minute straight stint. Jesse, uh, that's the team list. There's obviously been a little bit of changes, especially for the Roosters, nothing for the Knights, but where are you at with the super coach side of things? Um, so, yeah, you mentioned Ponga. I, I didn't actually have him in my notes either, funnily enough, but I, I will just quickly touch on him. Um, he has a, He's had a pretty good bounce back. You know, he's um, pretty much to the price that he started the season at now, which is nice um, for anyone that kept on to him. Um, during those first couple of poor games. But his last three average is 106.7 um, with a break even of 33. So pretty much what we were talking about pre-season with Ponga. You can thank me for selling him. No worries. Looks like, yeah, it looks like we're actually on the way up for him. So um, I am so stoked with my fullback pairings. I haven't changed them since we started. Uh, Drinkwater and Ponga looking like the, the two must-haves at the moment. So... Everything kind of works out in the end, but uh, he's um he's doing well. It's it's a lot to spend, you know. But if you've got Tedesco, um, I would probably be looking towards that if I wanted to get another gun in personally. Um, but I did make a few notes just on the game itself. So with a few of the players that stood out to me a bit, um, obviously one Joey Manu. Um, we spoke about it last week. How I thought, you know, Joey Manu against the dogs in general, looks like a great play. But when he goes to fullback, um, he averages over the 15 games he's played at fullback about 80 points a game. So um, very, very good play. He's 698K, so he's just shy of 739 break even. Um, if he just gets the one week at fullback and Tedesco's out for the HIA, he's still a good play long term. Um, through origin, he'll get that fullback spot again. If Tedesco's out longer which I suspect is probably going to be the case because of his concussion history, he becomes really, really appealing. Um, and almost to the point where I'm like, shit, you sort of have to try and work a way into your team. But amongst everything going on, I just don't know if it's you know vital right now. But yeah, still very, very good. Um, obviously, Angus Crichton too killed it last week. I don't know what the minutes rotation is going to be. Obviously, it was a complete outlier of a game for everyone. Um, Terrell May didn't get his second stint because Robinson came out saying um, they opted for, you know, a bit of pace through the middle instead of the power game. So um, if it means that, you know, Angus doesn't play the 80, he might play 60-odd, who knows. Uh, I still feel like you got a week to wait if you did want him. Um, price 414, 24 break even. So you'll be buying him in more. Um, but it might not be, you know, 500k, it might be 450 odd, but I still feel like that's very good price for Angus Crichton. Um, and that's, that's kind of the only two at the moment that sort of stand out for me in that team. Um, in the Knights though, Dylan Lucas comes in for Frizzell. 
So being a two RF center, um, break even of five, he's covering for Frizzell. Um, I've been seeing that Frizzell looks like it's quite a severe hamstring injury. I don't know anything confirmed yet, but it looks like he's going to be out at least another month, potentially. Um, it could be a good plug. You know, he's about 500K. Uh, dual center, pretty nice to have. So, yeah, something to keep an eye on too because he always seems to score well when he plays 80 on the edge. Um, but, yeah, those are my sort of plays for this matchup. With the Roosters, just a quick one for you. I've mm. noticed their draw for the next five weeks, and obviously those uh, League of Interest fans that follow us on social media, if you haven't done so, make sure you, you get across. But I update the ladders, uh, or not the ladders, the draw for the next five games each and every week. So the Roosters, I've noticed, are starting to enter a little bit of a tough um, patch of their run. So they've got the, the Knights this weekend, obviously minus a few players, and the Knights are starting to find a little bit of form. The Storm, then the Dragons for the Anzac game, which is all majority of the time mm. is a game that you just – the Dragons just get up for and, and turn into just soldiers, basically. Um, yep. The Broncos, round nine, and then the Warriors in round 10. So there's a bit of a, a, a big sort of um, draw coming up there. I'm not worried for Manu if he's to stay at fullback because I'd, he's just a worker. He'll get points. I've got no doubt about it. Where I worry about that is if he does, if Teddy, Teddy does come back earlier than we think and he goes to centre. I'm a little bit concerned with that draw for Joey Manu at center, not fullback. Yeah, it's a lot of money to spend on him at fullback, uh, center. Um, but he always seems to find a way. You know, we always have the discussion about Manu regardless. He, he can still put it up. Every game that he's played this year, barring the last week one, you know, he's had a couple of good scores there, both at center. Um, admittedly, he was on about 20 for most of the game until he went to fullback. Um, and it did boost him quite a lot in that game. So, yeah, you're going to get the ups and downs with him, um, but the ups are huge. So, yeah, it's it's a bit of a play. I suppose around the same price, you've got a few other players too. Like you got Lomax, you know, got a lot of upside with his kicking. And there's other players, but, yeah, it's not a, it's not a definite, definite jump on must-have, but it's, you know, it does look good. So, A yes or no answer from you is James Tedesco a sell? Uh, yep. Perfect. I think so. Melbourne's huge, huge break even. Um, I might just quickly bring that up. Massive break even for him. Uh, him and Dom Young too. So if you've got both of them, I reckon sell, sell them both because, um, you don't know, like, I don't know how long Tedesco is going to be out for. He's had a mozza of concussions in the past. Um, and he did seem to get pretty heavily clobbered, but, um, both him at, yeah, see, he's, he's 782k. Like it's, it's pretty good still. Um, you can still make some money out of him. Yeah. 184 break even. You don't want to get involved with that. And the thing I, I've realized, and I stuffed up with it last week, I think it was, I only played one fullback and I had one fullback out and I, did, I said I didn't care and I just wear it. But it was a bad decision because the fullbacks at the moment are starting to score very, very nicely. Even like Dylan Edwards and stuff, are, they're starting to crack 100. Um, so it was just a stupid play on my behalf. So I regret that. And moving forward, I will always make sure I have two fullbacks playing well as best as I can, obviously not without the origin period and stuff if that does happen. Um, the first Friday game, Melbourne Storm versus the Canterbury Bulldogs. So for the Melbourne Storm, uh, Tepai Morrell comes onto the bench in place of Jack Howarth. Nelson Asafa of Solomon still cannot find a way into this team. Supercoach news, that means Sean Bloor looks like an 80-minute stint on the edge. Um, a little bit cheaper than I know that the other edge back row of Katoa is Jesse's big, big play coming up. We won't talk about trades yet, but... I know he's so high up on him, it's not funny. So it would not surprise me if he has some kind of notes on him. For the Bulldogs, a, a fair few changes here. We're finally going to see Stephen Crichton at fullback for Blake Taft. Now, I'm eagerly watching this because I'm not getting on Crichton yet at all. No no way. Um, I will be looking to see what happens with this because I've got no doubt Blake Taft hasn't – he's been solid, but he hasn't set the world on fire to – um, basically cement that jersey for when he comes back, he automatically gets that spot. If Crichton can play well for either this week or if it's the week after as well, if it's an extended break for Blake just to get his head right, then I've got no doubt they'll probably keep Critter there. If he can go take it take off with this uh, fullback jersey, 
there's no need to go back to center because they're currently in the centers. I think they've got the way they want to go moving forward. They've got Karaz and Sherry. Um, and you can either even put uh, Tracy and swap um, Tracy and Karaz around and put Tracy into the centers. So they've got centers covered for mine at the moment. Fullback has been a big sort of sticking point to really help their attack a bit more. So for mine, for a super coach point of view, really looking forward to seeing what Crichton can do numbers wise this weekend. Um, at the moment, Max King is named. Now he has been, I've been told he's got a broken hand or broken arm. So how he's named, I'm not too sure, but um, surely he doesn't play. Surely this is just a bit of ducks and drapes and um, yeah. they basically don't have enough players to name or something. So they just go on there, we'll chuck him in and do have a few days to deal with it. But for the um, I mean, I set Sam Hughes owners, um, eagerly watch that because we don't know. Sam Hughes obviously finally got a decent score on the weekend. Um, that was obviously with a try, which definitely helped that. But even without that, I think he still would have scored like a 40, 45 or something. So he still had a, a lot better of a stint uh, points-wise than he has done so far. So just keep an eye on that because that could be great news uh, for Sam Hughes. Now, Kurt Mann is ruled out as well. Um, James Hammond still starts on the edge. Josh Curran in the back row. Um, there's so many, like the, the bench is just, I'm not entertaining any of the bench for the Bulldogs. So from a super coach <laughs> point of view, there's no point in even talking about it. There's literally no offense to them, but there's like one or two guys I've, I've actually not heard of. So um, yep. I don't want to try and speak like an expert, say anything about these guys. Cause it's just unfortunately guys, I, just, I don't watch enough of the Bulldogs junior lower grades to know enough about them. But Jesse, Super coach point of view, where do you go with these with this matchup? Uh, so just with Melbourne, um, obviously Joe Chan's not there again. So it looks like that's done and dusted. I hope he comes back just for that one price rise, but I don't think it's going to happen. Um, so Stop. at the moment, he's just going to rot away, rot away until we can do something with him. Um, but obviously, Sean Bloor becomes an option. So hasn't had a price rise yet. Uh, break even of 33, 445K. So I don't mind it. Um, I feel like he might even have a bit more security minutes wise um, than Angus Crichton, but I, I don't know which direction you'd go there. The fixtures are pretty good. Um, they're definitely better than the Roosters are. And, um, you know, they can start firing too. So he's outside Munster, like fuck, anything can happen with that. So he's, he's a bit on my radar, but obviously, man, I'm so high on Eli Katoa. He was my play this week. Um, obviously had his huge game last week and went up in cash. I was hoping for a bit of a drop. Um, didn't get it, but he only got 30 K like it's, it's not end of the world stuff, but, um, yeah, his break even is 38 now. So, you know, it's now and get him next. He's going to be over 700 by a little bit anyway. So, um, yeah, it looks like he's going to be my guy in this week, I think, but just with everyone else, um, Crichton at fullback, he's 550. He's just, got a just, 71 break. I'm sorry. Just b- before you move on to the dogs, just for the storm, you did mention their draw coming up. I just want to quickly say it. So they've got the Bulldogs this week. Then they've got a Roosters side who could be without a couple of their stars still. They've got South Sydney who, mate, they, could, they could be coachless. They could be playerless by that stage. The Gold Coast Titans after that who – it's basically versing the bite at the moment. And then the Sharkies, who on their day are sort of okay, but have been hot and cold as well this this uh, year. So there's some decent opposition there. And look, I know there's some good fullbacks at the moment, but being a Pappy owner who's I've kept Pappy at the moment, he is who I was missing out last week. I feel like someone like him could really come into his own the next four to five weeks. And if you can't afford yeah. some of these bigger gun plays, which I'd always say, that, yep, go to Ponga or something if you can. I don't think having Pappy right now in this next run is a bad thing. You don't think it's a bad thing to have him? Yeah, I think if that's who you want to go, like you can't afford someone like a Dylan Edwards or if you can't afford oh, yeah. um, a Ponga or something, like if you're saying, oh, I'm stuck with choosing Pappy, that's that's not a, that's not it's bad. It's a fair play. Yeah, it's not bad yeah. at all. I really like the next five runs, man, um, the next five games. Obviously the Dogs... Roosters depleted potentially, you know, who knows? But the rabbits and um rabbits and titans games could be anything. So and yeah, sharks are they're at home. They're in Melbourne for that one too. So yeah, it, it could be a good little stretch for him. So I do like that um like that run of games. But just with the dogs, um, it's obviously a bit early on Crichton, just see what happens with him. Um, Josh Curran got dual position. So 
Yeah, hey. it's huge. Yeah, it's good. It's finally <laughs> something to take home. So I don't. Neither of us have him, but um, you know, he's going to be hovering around that five hundred mark for a while. I don't see him going too don't high me. up. Do you? Oh, here we go. I haven't heard about your trades this week, so you could be onto him. Um, he's about five twenty. Break even's forty two. So. Yeah, I, I don't think he's desperate to get in. Um, if it means moving him up into a front row position to free up some stuff, I think you're, you're laughing with that. Um, but yeah, otherwise, if you don't have any of the dogs players, potentially maybe wait till like round nine after their buy if you're really desperate to get any of them in because I think they're going to have a bit of a, a rough go with a couple of the games coming. So yeah, there's there's not too much happening with them, to be honest, at the moment that I'm very keen to get into. Um, obviously, Sam Hughes, most people have him. Hopefully, he makes some money this week. But yeah, I wouldn't be looked to bring anyone else bar Josh Curran in outside of that. But yeah, yeah kick no, looks great, I, but still wouldn't do it. Yeah, it's, it's just something that still scares me off kick out. Uh, the yeah. Broncos versus the Dolphins, Queensland Derby. Uh, for the Broncos, Reese Walsh is back weeks before he was supposed to be. I've heard things he's going to wear a, a custom-made headgear that's going to protect his eye socket, etc. Like, I think that just shows you the Broncos where they're at at the moment in terms of some of the quality they've lost. They've obviously lost Reynolds. They just need that sort of guy steering, steering them around, and that's a that's big to come back and, and play with that sort of um, equipment on, which we've never seen before at this level of the game. So credit to Reese Walsh for doing it, but... I just don't know if this early on if I'd actually rush someone back who has to wear that to, to play. Yeah. Just, especially with Sailor actually has been going well. So um, in talking about Tristan Sailor, he does move to the bench. He does get a bench spot now. Um, whether that's just because of injuries and there is a spot now for him, I think that might be the case. I don't think he'll be there um, as a permanent um, week-to-week proposition. Uh, obviously, Adam Reynolds gone for looks like a, a, at least a few weeks with that hamstring complaint. Uh, Jock Madden comes into the halfback spots, not bad there. And Corey Oates comes onto the wing for Dean Mariner. Um, Xavier Willison also cracks the bench as well. So a lot of people still have him as that cheapy option. You will get him um, obviously back. I don't know what his B is at the moment. I don't know if he's up for a price rise or not, but um, he is. Six. Yeah, th- there you go. So you're going to yeah. get some cash out of him this week. He'll obviously play. And without um, Payne Haas there, I think he might be able to get some decent minutes coming off the bench there. So um, for the Dolphins, they've obviously got a few injuries as well. So one that isn't injured is actually Tom Flegler, who's been named, but I'd keep an eye on that, guys, because he's obviously in a war in the wars. He's got like his uh, wrist strapped up. He's had his shoulders and that stra- obviously strapped up at the end of the last game. Just keep an eye on that with uh, team lists just to make sure um, – Nothing has sort of happened with him there, and he's not scratched. Herbie F- Fineworth is out. Tessie New comes into the centres for him. Felice Kafusi, after his 100-metre sprint, basically, um, on the weekend, is obviously gone with his hemi. hemi. Uh, Ken- Kenny Bromwich obviously played a decent game on the weekend. Impressed coach Wayne Bennett, so he's into the starting side. Um, Jared Wallace comes onto the bench, and Milford comes onto the bench for the suspended Kurt Donahue, Jesse, super coach, talk to me. Uh, yeah, so quick on Willison. You mentioned it before. Um, he's 265, hasn't had a price change yet, minus six break even. So um, great cash down option if you're looking for that. If you've got Josh Curran to move up, you can get rid of someone out of that spot and go down at him. You know, there's plenty of options there. So, um, you know, he's still got some money to make too because he does look good out there. Um, Reese Walsh, obviously he's coming back in. Um, it is a bit early on him. I think I've seen a lot of people looking at doing the Reese Walsh play from Teddy, if they were going that way. He's 137 break even. Um, he probably takes the kicking as well. So I'd imagine, you know, that's that's a good extra bit of points out of that for him. But the break even's a bit high. Um, he will make points if you're not fussed on having it. But I still feel like with his face, I would, I would approach with caution at the very least. Um, but, you know. You can't knock him for his points. Um, Jesse Arthur's moves to the, or his favorite right wing, Reese Walsh's. So uh, break even a 22. He's 448K. He just keeps doing it. Um, I wasn't very keen on him to begin with. I still don't think he's got the floor. Um, but if he keeps scoring tries and keeps getting line breaks, then 
who needs a floor, you know what I mean? So he's he's just got a terrible base, man. I just really don't like it, but he's got a good name, so I'll give him that. <laughs> um, and Jack Bostock, um, break even of 10. I feel like Bostock's tenure is coming to an end in our teams. Um, he'll make money this week with his uh, 10 break even, but then he's going to have some ridiculous break even. I don't think he's going to do too much to the Broncos. I'm almost at the point where I don't think I'm even going to put a chip on him this week because um, he's got Tessie New inside him as well. So just having no Herbie, it's going to it's gonna affect his points a little bit there. I think you get him for one more price rise and then next week I might be looking at potentially downgrading him and he might be my ticket to Nathan Cleary again. You know what I mean? So good little time for that stuff to run through, but he's been incredible for points as well. Um, there's a few of them that look like they might hit their peak next week. Um, even Hammer's one of them too. Depending on how Hammer goes, he could have a really high um, sort of break even and pretty much cap out. And um, he can be your stepping stone to Val Holmes or anyone else that you're looking at. So um, still hold out on a few of them. I probably wouldn't buy many of them in at this point, but um, yeah. That, that's pretty much where I'd be looking at for the fins. Yep, no, that's, that's well. fair enough. I'm I'm sticking with the hammer for now. They got Parramatta next week, so they'll he'll rack up a, at least a hundred points against that shamozzle of a team. Um, first of the Saturday games, the New Zealand Warriors against the Manly Sea Eagles over there at Go Media Stadium. Uh, for the Warriors, Dallin with Tony Zelezniak is back from his hamstring injury, so Adam Poppy goes out of the side. Um, and Kurt Capewell also returns, um, which shifts Mitch Barnett to the prop position. Uh, and really the only change is it's, um, just that machine is just continuing to roll and they go back to New Zealand, which just is so scary after the way they played on the weekend against South Sydney. Um, for Manly, uh, obviously a great win against Penrith on the weekend. Huge credit to them there. Um, Ruben Garrick obviously out uh, with the 11-day uh, protocol for the HIA. Um, ben Trebojevic moves from the second row to the centers. So not ideal for any Ben Trebojevic owners still. Um, I've, had, I've still got him just lurking around. I think he's up in my second row at the moment because I, I shifted something, but um, I'm not really excited by that move at all. Him in the centers. I don't know if he's up against Roger or not, but that's, that's very scary um, for a manly point of view. Uh, that also moves Corey Waddell um, to the starting edge spot um, in place of Ben Trebojevic there. So uh, what do you got here for a super coach point of view? Um, both teams coming off some good wins. So wouldn't surprise me if there's a few players here with some negative BEs or very low BEs. Um, so tomorrow Martin's got a really low break even, uh, negative 25, but he's got a pretty poor scoring history in the past. Um, not someone I'd be super keen to look at. Um, you know, his partner, SJ, also has a really low break even. Yeah, mental. Um, you know, I just we want to of... say thank you to Sean Johnson for being the only good decision I think I've made this year in Supercoach. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. I love you. Yeah, he's been so good that last game, wasn't he? Um, break even of 21. My note here is it's SJ season. So, oh. yeah. Yeah, oh. good run coming. 691. Oh, um, dirty to me. Yeah, it's one of those, do you opt out of the Cleary Hines combination and run with um, SJ as your other half? And if so, which out of Cleary and Hines do you keep? You know what I mean? It's a tricky well, one. But... It's hard. Do we talk about this now or do we wait until the trades? Because there well, is a talking point I want to talk about there with that because yeah. there's really interesting points. We'll wait till the trades for that one, I think, because oh. it's just going to keep going. Um Jackson Ford, I said it last week, I wasn't keen. Ate my words. Uh, I'm still not keen. He's 700K now. He's he's dearer than Katoa. He's dearer than Ola Kawatu. Like, he just keeps doing it. Uh, 23 break even. So, he will do it again. He'll go up more. So, there has been a couple of them on that side of things. Um, scoring quite well. For Manly, um, I don't think Ben Turbo is a problem yet. You know what I mean? He had that game last week where he did score some points and it did push his break even quite low. I wouldn't want to play him if I could avoid it. Um, at least this way he's going to be getting 80 minutes where he hasn't been getting 80 minutes in the last few weeks. So, yeah, 
you just sort of chip away. His dual position's flexible and handy enough to just ride with him at the moment. But yeah, don't don't super rely on a starter. Um, Cherry Evans though, sort of expected that coming into his you know milestone game that he would kind of take the reins for it. Seven hundred eleven k break even of two. So uh, he'll have the kicking duties back off Garrick for for the meantime while Garrick's out. Um, but it kind of goes into the same discussion with SJ. Like, what do you do with Cherry Evans? Difference with um, different with him is he's got Origin, where Sean Johnson doesn't, um, yeah. and Sean Johnson will continue to kick. So, yeah, out of the two, I would lean towards SJ personally, but uh, I definitely see the appeal with Cherry Evans. Man, he he looked good. So, I've been going on about this, so I'll keep going with it. So the Warriors next five. They got Manly obviously this weekend. Then they got the Dragons, the Titans, the Newcastle Knights, and then the Roosters, who I think by then will have a most of their hopefully their full strength side back. Yeah. For Manly, they got the Warriors this weekend. Then they got the Titans, Eels, Raiders, and then Dolphins. So both have some pretty decent draws coming up. So as mm. you said, like there is actually a, a couple of halfback headaches for mine at the moment, and we'll talk a bit more about it down the track. But there is some. Some decisions to be made there because at the next four or five weeks, I think there's going to be more than just the, the Cleary and Hines show. Yeah, definitely. Um, it just opens up the doors to pod plays in general too because Cleary Hines is such a you know, black and white sort of half pairing setup that you just go, all right, just stick with them. Um, I want to be sticking with them, but when all these other guys start popping out 100, 120s, you know, and they're all got so much upside and they're all, you know, potentially 150, 200 K cheaper than these other two. You're like, oh, it'd be rude not to consider them, but it's hard to ignore the best two. So. No, yeah. I agree. Um, So next game is the Parramatta Eels versus the North Queensland Cowboys Saturday, 530. Uh, really keen to, to watch this one unfold. Marcus Sivo has been dropped. So, Brad Arthur maybe listens to the fans, who knows, but um, to replace him, Bailey Simonson goes to the wing and lo and behold, Morgan Harper's back. <laughs> so you get a little bit excited by the dropping of Sevo. He just gets smacked in the face with a big dick um, <laughs> with a with a Morgan named Morgan Harper into oh. your face. So thank you, Brad, uh, Brad Arthur. And then to make matters worse, so that big dick comes in and slaps your one side of the face. Then another one comes in a horse dick and just hits you in the face and they go, we'll raise that and we will drop Blaze to Lungy. And you're thinking, okay, sweet, he's going to be put into the centre. No, he's out of the side. He's playing fullback this week for reserve grade. Make of that what you will. That's another talking point. Dylan Brown stays at halfback. So you're thinking, oh, here we go. So Ethan Saunders isn't even in there. Dejan Arcee goes to 5'8". So make of it what you will. Bryce Cartwright, the Cardi party is back, but... By the sound of it, his ribs still aren't good. So I think this is a desperation play to try and just get a, a win back on the board. I don't think – if I was the Cowboys, I'd just be smashing him the first few minutes of that game and he'd probably be off. Um, yeah. it's, that's just where his ribs are at. And Wiram McGregor has been dropped out of the side after basically just being a passenger on the football field last weekend. Uh, for the Cowboys, horrible news to Zach Lay, but um, – from obviously a personal point of view, he was looking like he was going to be spin for his, his season this year. Uh, a lot of talk about in the last year or two, finally getting that crack um, to be that starting center for the Cowboys and basically looked like he just had that um, locked in um, week to week basis provided he was performing. Um, for a super coach point of view, he already had scored like 45 points or something. And that was after 30 minutes or something like that. So he looked like he was in for a really good, big good game and I needed it personally as an owner I, I stuck solid with him so he didn't lose too much money with that 45 so it was it sucks to uh, lose him uh, I was really looking forward to having him there this year I thought he could have been a decent option there just as that mid sort of price but Tommy Chester does does come in for the North Queensland Cowboys Jesse um it was a horrible blow for Zach Labor you never ended up getting on him yeah. I know at the first week or two you wanted to but you, you saved your, your trade there but Horrible news for him, um, not just to, for a super coach point of view. Yeah, no, it's it's very sh it's shit, man. To be fair, it's it sucks. Um, a bloke can't get a run, you know. Like it's just it's just an unlucky one. ACLs are the worst. So, um, yeah, you know, hope he comes back, you know, next season 
firing again. So good to see him because when he's going, man, he looks great. He he looks incredible for those first 20 minutes. Like he was basically the guy that was doing it all. And I thought, fuck, here we go. This is going to be a layback game. Um, and yeah, just horribly unlucky. So um, I know we spoke about it last week, you know, keep layback. This could be the biggest game of the year for him. It ended up being the worst game of his career. So um, yeah, no, that's just shit. So you can't predict an ACL. Um, but as far as, yeah, as far as some of the players go, just quick on the Eels. Eels are poo-poo. Uh, no, thank you. Don't really want any of them. So, unfortunately, tulagi has gone. Um, I don't know. What are your thoughts on him coming back into the side? He needs to be center. Like, he actually ended up having a good game against Manly. Like, he started very, very shaky, and he's not a center normally, but he looked like he started to develop as that game went on. He should. They should have just kept him there. Like, he's a young guy. He's now played three different uh, positions in four weeks at yeah. both first grade and reserve grade level. That's just going to mess the best players around, let alone a young kid who's trying to make his way into first grade while their main playmaker's out and their main leader is is out in Mitch Moses. So that's, for mine, just I can't get it. I can't grasp my head around the fact that what Brad Arthur and the club is doing to this kid. He's a great player. He's going to be one of those kids – we talk about in years to come going, just how good is he? And um, I just would have left him at centre. Let him just keep developing his game. Um, as I said, he had some good touches in the back half of that Manly game, so he's doing some things. Um, but, yeah, it's it just sucks. Um, to have Morgan Harper come in from a Parramatta point of view, it doesn't excite me. It's not a player to get excited about either. Like, yeah, I don't know. But one yeah. thing I will say in on this game is the Cowboys haven't been great defensively. They have let in a lot of points. So I, we will talk about it a bit more in our trades, but this it has been a factor on me weighing up who to trade out and when. So I'll just leave that as a little bit of a teaser. Yeah, so he comes in at 275 now like he had his 70k price rise his break even's five but it's the problem of you know do you hold on to him do you use him as your stepping stone to shiller and just piggyback shiller make your cash potentially jump off shiller next week when he's not named get on to kyle Eero. you know what i mean like you've got a three little stepping stone way up there with a bit of money um and at the same time, you've got to start focusing on points too because it's it's getting a little bit past that now. But there's a lot of money to be made still. Um, it's just whether or not you need it. But, yeah, no, I don't know. It's a tricky one with him, whether you're not to hold him or just to flick him now. Um, to be fair, I don't really see him making too much more, even when he is back. I just don't know what happens yet. It could be a very slow burn. But, um, yeah, it's, it's a headache for everyone. Um, bigger headache, Dylan Brown looks dog shit at the moment um the whole team does to be fair he scored 55 points in probably his worst game um or the team just looked nowhere so that 55's kind of deterred me a little bit from trading him so far to be fair um you know it's a pretty high floor if you've been terrible but opens up a lot of doors to do other things um 642 with a break even of 96 I don't find any way that he makes that 96 points up. Um, to be fair, it's the Cowboys. They have leaked a lot of points, but they do just outscore everyone. So um, do you cut your ties now with Dylan Brown? Do you hold on strong to him? Don't know yet. Honestly, he's he's kind of my big ticket around. I, I'm sort of factoring him his money for, for that Cleary move if I need it, but might just run with a cheap set of 5.8s for now. I don't know. I don't know. It, it's a it's a hard one, man. It's it's freaking the eels. They just they make everything so difficult, don't they? Oh, what you're telling me, Brown? trust me. Yeah. Um, I was going to leave this to the the trade side of things when we talk about our trades, but we can talk about it now. Let's let's un, let's unwrap it. The more I think about it, the more be, the reason that the Cowboys do let in some tries and some points. I'm actually going to run him this week, um, and then. I feel like I don't think he'll get to the 96. So I think there will be some money lost, but I don't think he'll lose that much to really mm. impact anything next week. So I'm happy to, for now, focus on some other things in my team, leave him this week to hopefully get like a, I predict I reckon a 60, 65 for him this week um, with that Cowboys defense. And to be honest, probably a lot of that 
points last week for his cover tackles and stuff that he just kept having to make. It was just ridiculous. Like he would have got so much defensive points last week. Um, so for that reason, um, I'm going to leave him for now. I just think, yep, he's going to lose some points this week, but he's not going to lose as much as to, to really impact me moving forward for next week. Cause then I'm talking the Cleary stuff and I'm going to talk about that sort of thing. There's some yep. stuff that I need to play with, and I think he's going to be a crucial part of that. Yeah, no, that's fair. Say, for example, he does get 65 against um, the Cowboys. He'll lose about 25, which isn't the worst thing in the world. And then his break even will be 65 again. You know what I mean? So he does that again, and all of a sudden he starts on the way. He's, he's back on the way up. So, yeah. yeah it's and to be fair, the next two weeks are the Cowboys, and then it's the Dolphins up at um, Darwin. So, Eels not great at all, and I don't predict they'll probably win either of those games, if I'm being brutally honest. But I do think at least it's two matchups that Dylan Brown, even though he's been poor and they're just going to stick with this stupid freaking halfback thing, it's at least two oppositions where I think he can score decently with a bit of attack. It's two teams that look a little bit um, loose around the, the edges and the ruck um, with their defense. So I think he might be able to benefit from that a little bit at least. Yeah, you hope so anyway. Um, for the Cowboys, there's a few of them, man. Um, Scott Drinkwater, she's the goat. He's the best fullback in Super Coach, in my opinion. Next to next to Ponga, I'm happy to run with both of them. Break even of 47, um, 891k. So yeah, I hope we see him back over a mil quite soon. Well, I do at the very least. So yeah, he looks I fantastic. I have currently no Cowboys. Backs, a cowboy backs in my back line, and it scares the shit out of me. Yeah, I've well, Val Holmes and Drinkwater. I wanted them to go big last week, and I, I got exactly I what I wanted. Draft. <laughs> but I don't have that for my classic team. Yeah, well, I lost Laybutt oh. in draft. I also lost Herbie as well, and Talagi. And <laughs> that's a whole draft video in its own, I think, man. My draft card <laughs> looks cooked. I was looking at it before thinking, I don't even know how I can recover from this. I think I might just delete the app. Um, <laughs> who else have I got? Yeah, so... Sorry, Scott who's, on top, who's on top of draft? I've, I've, I haven't looked at the ladder this, this week. On top of the draft? Um, yeah, it's it's not you, draft. is it? Oh, I don't know. I haven't looked at the, the ladder. I just felt like I just wanted to ask while we are on the, the top of your uh, draft. And, I haven't looked, um, but I hope it's not you. I think there's a, a team called um, Inch Inch at a Time, I think, no, and I think they may have that, that one spot at the moment. Yeah, so. yeah, that's right. I'll teach you how to draft soon, guys. It's all good. Yeah. This isn't a draft video, <laughs> but I'd love to get into how fucked my side is. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> um, yeah, so drink water, fantastic. Val Holmes, Um He's a firm hold, man. He's he's the best in class. I, I don't see anyone doing what he does. 868K. Uh, his break even is 109. If he loses 50K, I wouldn't. I couldn't care less. You know, I mean, I'm I'm just enjoying the ride. So, yeah, really good to see. And um, Reese Robson has just oh. been killing it. He has been killing it. Um, break even of 41. He's about 700K. Looks like a pretty much the, at the moment the the best hooking option you can really get onto. So um, their draw hasn't been very hard, admittedly, to start the season. Um, it does start to sort of toughen up for them a little bit. So I think we might see um, a couple of these scores swing the opposite direction. But, uh, man, his, his attacking game is there. His base stats are there. You know, if you need a good hooker and you want to go against the crowd with uh, Harry Grant, I, I couldn't fault it, to be honest with you. So. Everyone um, needs a good hooker. It's true. I don't have one. I wish. You know. <laughs> you know what? Out of all the um, out of all the preseason stuff we spoke about, and ev- all the sort of help we gave out to ourselves and others, I would go out there and say Reese Robson is the one I regret not listening to myself about. Out of all the stuff that we spoke about, I actually regret Robson the most. Yeah. He's the one that got away, you know. We every oh, video we took we Robson, 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 Robson. We yeah, had the whole him time. until right at the end. Yeah, a couple of late changes, little things here and there. I think I actually went against Reese Robson um, to Brandon Smith, so I could afford Dylan Brown. Yeah, 
God, bah, I, hate bah. That. I hate that. That sucks so bad. Should have just ran with Dearden and Robson. And then I thought, oh, but I've got drink water. I've got too many Cowboys. It wasn't a bad thing to start with in hindsight. So what do you do? Just keep on fucking moving. Yeah. Um, but there's a few of them that still look good. Um, obviously, Dearden had a quiet game. Still probably one of the best five eights at the moment. Um, Ruben Cotter keeps pumping out massive scores. Every time I look at moving him over or trading him out, puts out another 70. So, um, yeah, he, he's he's pretty well locked in at the moment for me. But everyone else outside of that, uh, not super appealing, unfortunately, price-wise and all. Yeah. But no, I agree. Yeah. Um, next game up, the South Sydney Rabbitohs versus the Cronulla Sharks. For the Rabbitohs, Latrell Mitchell obviously suspended for that three-week period. We finally get to see Jai Gray, who I feel I should have been there a couple of weeks ago with Latrell moving to the centres. We finally see that. The shock, Damian Cook has been dropped. He's now even on the bench. He's been dropped. Peter Mamazelos has gone to starting hooker. Now, for, for a rugby league point of view here, and we're going to, we'll probably talk about this more tomorrow night on the Wednesday show or tonight on the Wednesday show. Um, I've got to get used to this one not being live, being uploaded. Oh, it's shaking me. It's the only video we do at the moment that's not live. Um, it's Damien Cook is not the biggest issue at that club. He's far from it. He's actually been decent this year without being spectacular, but he's a hooker who's been behind a forward pack that's getting the shit bashed out of him week to week. You could chuck Cameron Smith at his prime behind that pack at the moment. He would do nothing. That's how bad their forward pack is at the moment. And they want to pick out Damien. Like, yeah, honestly, if I was Damien Cook, I'd be to my manager right now saying, get me out of here because this is not on. Like, I'm being used as a scapegoat like Lockie Ilias was a few weeks ago. Sorry to say, Latrell and Cody should have been dropped way before uh, Lockie Ilias or Damien Cook. For me, that's an absolute joke. Positive, Tyrone Munro comes onto the wing, so we finally get to see him. A lot of people wanted him at the start of the year, but he obviously was out with that injury, um, or the collarbone injury, sorry. Talis Duncan's been dropped once again. I don't know what the hell is going on with Talis Duncan at the moment, but in one week, out the other week, like at the start of the season, we were told he was basically guaranteed the edge spot. Then it went to he will make an impact off the bench in the middle, and then who knows what's happened there. Sean Kepi out of the, uh, off the bench as well. Shaq Mitchell, Savili Havili, oh, yes, no, Saliva Havili, and Davy, um, Davy, it's been a big, big uh, night. Davy Moala um, onto the pine as well, the bench. So, honestly, yeah. I don't know what to talk about with the South Sydney Rabbitohs. So, Sharkies, um, Britt Nakora is back in a positive move. He goes, now look. This has a roll on effect. This is a three way sort of move. So, Britt Nakora comes back to the um, starting side on the edge, which is great news. Anyone that has him, I've got him in one of my draft teams. I'm happy about that. Now, you'd think Talakai, no one fits in how he's been for the last two years. All right, he goes to the centers. No, Kyrell Iro keeps his center spot, which is great news. And he must be listening to the podcast, Fitzy, because Talakai, he's onto the bench doing that impact forward type role, which I think will suit him down to a T. So that is great news for Super Coaches. As you said, Eero for mine is another watch this week. Um, he could be a play next week. If he looks like now he's going to get that center spot and let's get get a chance to make it his own. Yep. Yeah, he's um he's just working up his minus break even at the moment. But I didn't expect it to be honest with you, man. I thought um Me I thought either. it was just going to be Talakai back in the centers, Eero back to the resis and Everything as it was, but no, it's um, it's looking like something's shaping up to be quite handy there for everyone. Um, if you do have Talakai, he's definitely a hard sell in my opinion. Um, you know, you can't be doing much with a, a bench forward who's a center at five eighty k, one hundred and five break even. You sort of have to let him go. Um, but there's so many options to go to from there. Um, Nico Hines comes back in for everyone's teams that still has him. Um, 104 break even. This will be his test for me, I think, against the the rabbits to sort of decide what what we do with him, whether I hold on to him um, or he's a he's a swap over to Cleary potentially for the Tigers. Uh, just to just to wait and see. But I, I wouldn't be touching any of the Rabbitohs right now. Um, obviously, I've got Totola in my side, um, 
he's yeah, the boy. only one that I'd be happy to have, to be fair, because you know yeah. he's the only one getting solid minutes and a pretty consistent score because they're just getting sort of walked through. But yeah, um, outside of that, maybe Jack White and Sue. He hasn't, you know, he hasn't sort of let anything down. He's been decent enough for his points, but it's a it's a big no no with this side. I think Dimitri is kind of walking himself out the door with these decisions. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I I, I 100 agree with that. Um, yeah, I I don't know what else to talk about when it comes to South. I feel like we've bashed them that much that I, I kind of want to just move on from South at the moment. Yeah. It's just actually <laughs> embarrassing, so. embarrassing to look at. On Nico Hines, you did touch on him. I didn't last week. We I think we both wanted to sell him originally, and then we sort of just because out of other things needed to happen, we actually ended up keeping him. I've got him, yeah. and I'm playing him this week. And yeah, of course. Um. We'll talk about captains and vice captains after this before we get into our trades, but I've actually got him right up there at the moment in terms of a, a potential captain because that's our Sydney team. If there's a week that Nico steps up after a buy, has got a chance to refresh, maybe have a chat to, to Braid and Trindle about just how they're going to work that combination to benefit him a bit more. Um, surely this South team is just there for the taking and Nico to actually make a, a real stamp on this game and, Obviously, he doesn't care about Supercoach, but more so for, I think, the Blues because there's now a 5'8 jersey for mine that's opened up because Moses, I don't think, will be fit enough to play that first game. And he looked like he was getting spoken about as being that six now alongside Cleary. So if Hines can start to pull some games together here, um, I've got no doubt in my mind he becomes a red-hot um, favourite for that six jersey within a couple of weeks. So he will come into this te- this game with a beanie's bonnet for mine. Yeah, well, it makes the whole, um, you know, Cleary-Hines combination through Origin even worse, doesn't it? If yeah, it looks it like he's going to get his, if he's going to get that 5'8 jersey. So, um, like, we did keep Hines after the whole, you know, poor start just because Cleary got injured. Um, not for any other reason, to be fair. I think if Cleary hadn't got injured, I would have got rid of him a few weeks ago. So, um yeah, like he's got it in the past. You know exactly what Heinz is going to do. I don't think I'll be captaining him this week. Um, I'm still pretty keen on Drinkwater, to be honest, against the Eels. But oh, I don't have him. Uh, so. Yeah, well, yeah, that's the thing too. Um, yeah, or even Ponga against. Uh, I think they've got the Roosters. So yeah, yeah Thursday night. Know. Yeah, I don't like a Thursday captain. Kind of. I was going to say that's very. Once we get to that tour, that's very ballsy. The, the Thursday yeah. night captain, but last week it would have been great to have him. We, we spoke about the wet weather. So um, yeah. just for the Sharks' next five, because this might impact whether to keep Hines or whatever, Rabbitohs this weekend, the Cowboys, the Raiders, the Dragons, and then the Storm. So it's, it's okay. Bad. It's not great. Um, it's not yeah. the worst draw. It's not the best draw, um, but it's a draw that if Hines can be Hines, he can do something with that draw. So yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. That's, that's that. um, uh, so- hey. Go on. Oh, I was just going to say, uh, with Britton Nakora coming back through, he's got 132 break even. So there's a good chance that he has a massive drop in the coming weeks. Um, obviously, last season, he was one of the most premium asset second row forwards in the game next to um, Day for Feeder. So, yeah, one to keep an eye on. Um if it comes through and he's obviously not eligible for anything as far as rep stuff goes with origin and that. So it looks like a good run through. If he drops down into the, you know, low six hundreds, that's, that's quality there for that. So yeah, something to consider. hundred percent agree. Sunday games, the West Tigers versus the St. George Illawarra Dragons. Um, a couple of weeks ago, this game did not excite me at all. And now sort of actually, I think to myself, yeah, I can sit through this game. This this could be a bit of a bit of entertainment here. Um, for the West Tigers, Safarth moves um, into the back row for John Bateman. So different role there for for Safarth, but that might mean eighty minutes. Um, Fainu or Sam Fainu is out as well. Um, his brother Latu um, is out as well. Uh, Asu Asu Kapoa. Um, and then Justin Mata Matamua, 
I think that's right. Sorry, guys. Madam Moore. And then Jake Simkin is also on the bench as well for the Tigers. So just some little changes. Obviously, Galvin suspended for that one more week, and I wish he was back for this game. I think this game would have been right down his alley, but yeah. spewing about that one. Um, him also back next week. We'll talk about it next week, but that also plays a big impact into me keeping Dylan Brown or not. So we'll talk about that next week. We're not even going to entertain that this week. Uh, for the Dragons, Michael Molo has been dropped. Um, Jack DeBellin shifts to the bench again uh, to accommodate Harme Selly, who's back uh, from his calf injury. Blake Laurie um, has also been moved to the bench. How is he even still in the team? I've got no idea. He has been horrible the last few weeks. Like, he must have nude pictures of Flanagan or something because <laughs> he has not been good. And Jack Bird, even though it looked like he lost his leg on the weekend, he's been named to play. So mm. um, that's good news for Jack Bird. Obviously, he was a massive um, injury riddled uh, late, uh, career the last couple of years. So good to see him still fit and, and playing centers. But um, that's it. There was rumors about Toro Sloan and Zach Lomax switching from fullback to wing. Now, that hasn't been confirmed in the team list, um, but keep an eye on that. There is obviously been a bit of uh, rumors around today about that, so just keep an eye on that as we get closer. I have been hearing things that Lomax might be a 80-minute fullback this weekend, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, it'd be interesting, wouldn't it? It sort of makes him even more appealing than he already is. Um, he's 727K, 56 break even, so he's comfortably hitting that and some. Uh, he looks unreal, so yeah. Um, you know, the kicking obviously helps. It just depends, obviously, what happens with whether he moves or not this season um, and where to, you know what I mean? Like, I still wouldn't deter that just from picking him up. Like, I think he's been a crazy, crazy player this season, even on the wing. Um, but, yeah, fullback, probably even better. Uh, there's not too much else in that side. I know there's a lot of those forwards that have actually been doing really well, like Tom Eisenhuth, Tyler Mariner. Um, so uh, these guys, they've all gone up quite a bit in cash, sort of under the radar too. I think a lot of it was due to uncertainty about their position because they're constantly changing their team list from week to week, even right before kickoff, an hour before they confirm the team list. It's different again. You don't know who's starting. doesn't seem to actually make a difference to them though. Like Tom Eisenhuth has been bouncing from bench to lock to bench to lock for the last three, four weeks. Um, and in the meantime, he's gone up about 120K. So they just keep chipping away, putting good points in. So you sort of they're doing the right thing there anyway, but it's still very, very random as far as the team goes. Um, with the Dragons, yeah, Safar's starting. Um, he's the same one. With the actually. Tigers. Oh, sorry, the Tigers. Yeah, <laughs> just reading. It's late, guys. Yeah, it is. It's late. almost eleven o'clock here. <laughs> um, yeah, so Safar starts. Um, he probably gets eighty minutes. I still. Don't know what that means for his points, though, if it's any different through through the middle or if it changes his effort. Um, but his, you know, he could actually still make some, but it's a very random play for you. Better options. Um, Abby Coruscant is yo-yoing like we said he probably would. So uh, break even of 89 now. Um, he slowed down a lot. He had his 60, had his 40 game. So has the say, we ones, told you so. Has the small ones. Um, still has his upside, but still very, very up and down. Like it's it's a roller coaster ride with him every week. Um, but Isaiah Papali'i looks to be shaping up to some good form again. Um, he's 582. I think he's averaging about mid 60s at the moment, but 67 break even. So pretty much buying him at what you expect him to score on a decent week. Um, I don't think we're going to see him hitting the hundreds again, but I, I honestly, I like what I see from him. Hey, he's, he's got the effort mm. at the moment. He seems to be there. He's missed a few bad tackles and that kind of thing. Let a few line breaks through, but the threat's there for him. So at 580, I think he's a good price as a, as a bit of a pot in general anyway. So, but yeah, outside of that, wait till Galvin's back. That team's so much better with him in it. Oh, I agree. Last game of the round, the Canberra Raiders back in Canberra. Dangerous proposition. Oh, this is such a juicy, juicy game to end on. Gold Coast tight against the Gold Coast Titans, 6-15. For the Raiders, preseason cheapy favorite, Chevy Stewart, um, has been named at fullback. So Jordan Rapana, that knee injury, I believe it was a, a meniscus or something. Uh, he actually 
done. And he actually came back and played on the weekend. I don't know how. He's out for like six weeks now. So yeah. it was a decent enough injury. He's he's gone. Um, but he ended up coming back. They were smashing the eels as well. Like crazy to think he actually came back. Um, Mariotta has also been shifted back to the bench as Zach Hosking returns. So I think he's a bit higher up now uh, with his super coach points. But definitely if you have a – him, it looks like he's going to be getting that 80 minute role once again. So that's, especially for this matchup, if you held on to him, you're laughing because I can see him, honestly, I could see him close to tonning up this weekend. He, he could be that good and that damaging. Um, Corey Horsbra has been sidelined uh, with that groin injury. We've seen that, that, that footage on the weekend. The trainer down his Dax, yeah, it looks like he was enjoying that a little bit too much. Um, Trey Mooney has been named to play mm. as uh, alongside Simi Sasagi. Um, for the Titans, Foran's been it's there's no changes. Uh, mm. <laughs> I guess well, there is one change points. for Fafita starts. Oh, yeah, sorry, Fafita's officially starting. Um, on in but he did that on the weekend, that was a late change though. So, yeah, um, true. he is named this time to technically start. So, that is right there. Um, look, the thing to talk about here from a super coach point is. Whatever Raiders players you have this weekend, make sure they're in your one to seventeen, and make sure you start you're playing them, getting their points. Because I can see, some, look, these are the games that also stuff super coaches a lot. I feel like when you get so excited about these matchups, yeah. but a cold night in Canberra Sunday night, the last thing anyone in the on the Gold Coast wants to do is travel <laughs> to Canberra Sunday at six fifteen p.m. You're off your head if you say anything other than that. The Raiders are going to be having a party, and I'm making this bold prediction right now. The Gold Coast Titans will be the first team on the list for 2024, and everyone who's followed the social media pages last year knows exactly what I'm talking about. Um, they will be making the list this year. Yeah, it's it's a cold, rainy night in Canberra. Oh. Prime conditions for them. The Titans are going to hate it so much. Oh, it's I didn't even think of that, but that's an excellent point. Um, these cashies are coming in thick and fast from Canberra. We were all hoping for it and felt very dirty having so many in the side, but, man, I, <laughs> I wish I had more now. Um, so, is James Schiller, is this a record? He's minus BE. Is this a record? Like, I have, um, can't remember the last sure. time a player has been like this. I'm sure Buller was in a similar position when he started oh, last yes. season because there was a few tons to begin with. Um, minus 117. He doesn't even – he can go on for a minute and leave, and there's your money made, you know what I mean? Like, let alone the fact that they're playing K. the Titans this week. If he scores 100 again, you're, you're talking like 400K overnight for him. Like, it's just – it's out of control. So um, – you buy him in at the expense knowing that he potentially is only a one-week play. You know what I mean? Like, Hopper Whitey could be back. If Chevy Stewart does shit, um, Sebastian Chris might go to fullback in the meantime. We know that Ricky loves him at fullback. Maybe Schiller keeps his position, even with Hopper Whitey back. There's all these things that can happen. Money um, talks. Yeah, big time. But, yeah, at the – at that price, at basement, really, 238.9, 117. Like, you got to get him in, but you you have to, like, who do you get him in for? You know what I mean? Like, it, we had someone to expend last week, Torpiki. I don't know who dropped to get Talagi in, but um, now that we've got Talagi, do you drop Talagi to get Schiller? I don't have Talagi, so. Oh, wait, yeah, no, sorry, I do. I, you're talking about Blaze Talagi, so. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, I'm a labor owner, so hey, he's bro. looking. I'm looking like That's a labor to for him. That's the perfect. Schiller, um, movies on the cards, so yeah, it's very nice. It's you know, it's a forced hand play, but definitely one that you would have done anyway. Um, the only one that I could do outside of going Blaze to Lunky down to Schiller is Taylor May, and I don't really want I, to. I, I'll tell you right now, and I was going to bring it up when we talk about the Nathan Cleary situation. I wanted to get rid of Talon May, but listen to this. After the bye this weekend, they've got the Tigers, the Cowboys, who have leaked a lot of points. And I think by then, Nathan Cleary's back and will just 
make their defense look as bad as, as it is. They got the bunnies, which by round nine, we said they might not have a coach by round out. By round nine, they might literally not have a have a club admin the way things are going. <laughs> um, and they might not have a, a spine. Um, round 10, they got the Bulldogs as well. So that is good. Really, for the Penrith Panthers, like I looked at that straight away and I said, I'm I'm keeping May. I'll I'll take the yeah. hit um and just say I reckon he'll start to score some decent points there. So yeah, I just exactly think right. with, with Schiller, the fact that his B is so low, the fact that it's the Titans, even if it's a one week play, I simply have Worth to it. make it. I just simply it. have to do it because yeah. the way this backline is well, well has been this year, no one's been able to keep their spot. So he might might be back out next week, but then the week after, I'd, like he could be straight back. We, we're, yeah. we're not sure what's going to happen with his backline at the moment. Everyone, someone's out every week. Yeah, even the ones that own Kotrick, they still have a chance that he comes back. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. you never know. You just hold on and just hope. But, you know, he gets 117 break even. There's every opportunity for him to have another week, potentially with a negative break even still going into his second week. And then maybe into his third week, depending how he scores. Like, mm. it's it's huge. It's it's such a good thing to ride off. So, um, yeah, he, he's, he's coming into the side regardless. Just got to work out for who. Um, Ethan Strange is another one. One that I, at the moment, the way things are shaping up, I'd be very happy to even just start him at the expense of Dylan Brown because, um, yeah, 96 points last week. He was on about 70 points in about half an hour. I was just like, fuck, this is, a, this is insane. Um, 387K with a minus 25. So, yeah, making that making that cash up. Um, Xavier Savage, 472, minus 8 break even. There's just so many of them. I don't feel like he's worth buying at the moment anyway. Um, not now, not after the money that he's already made. Um, but if you've got him, yeah, still hold on. Well done. Just keep, keep rolling on. Yeah. Danny Levi, minus eight break even, 358K. You could say half the side. They've got minus everywhere. Um, he just keeps scoring tries. Without that try, it would have been an absolute shocker of a game for him, admittedly, but... You know what? If you put yourself in the position to score a try, there's a chance he will. Probably could have got a second one too, but yeah, no, he's he's just keeps chipping away. Um, Smithies come out within his 70 points. The new Hopgood, 80 minutes at lock, just he got an offload as well. Probably his only offload of the year. Man, how good do the Raiders <laughs> look at the moment, eh? I suppose it was at the Eels, so... There's just so many. And then now you bring Chevy Stewart into the mix. Another 204. Basement price, fullback. All he has to do is just keep the spot. Because you're looking at... No, no, dis- no disrespect. No disrespect to Rapana, but please be out for like 10 weeks. <laughs> and just so we got time to watch this guy go. Because if he's in there again after three weeks, the way the Raiders are playing, he'll have a BE of like minus 100 or something. It's oh, crazy. yeah, maybe. <laughs> Well, he's got a good chance to to get it kicked off pretty well with the Titans this week. You know, if he just pumps them up, yeah, man, there's options there. But then, like, where do you stop getting cashies in? That's like you can't have all of them. You start sacrificing good players um, at the expense of making cash. Like, it's good for for the generation side of things, but you still need them to make points. At least this week, the Schiller play is really vital because they're playing the Titans. If they're playing the Panthers, I'd be a bit worried about it. I'd still be keen on getting the points and the cash made with the negative, but I wouldn't be confident playing him. And then I'd be looking to sell him pretty quick. But yeah, it at the moment, opportunities there. Um, for the Titans, there's only one player that I'm pretty keen to look at soon. It's Day for Feeder. Almost keen enough to look at him this week. Just take the hit because um, his break evens. You know what? To be fair, it's very, very attainable for him. It's 112. Um, normally, I'll be like, 112, I'll be like, oh, he can hit 112. If he hits 90, he loses, what, 20K? Who cares? Yeah. Stay for feeder. You just get him in for it. So, yeah, he's 830. Um, and even at 830, I don't mind it either. Um, I think he's owned by no one at the moment. You know, like if you want to jump the gun, get onto it right before everyone else does. Might be a little bit early, but I really like it, to be honest with you. 
I would I want to talk about his second row partner, Bo Furmore. And as an owner that's held on to him, 71 on the weekend. Um I feel sick. I feel finally, sick. Finally. Finally. Oh. Um I'll keep yeah. him for now. He hopefully he's starting to find his feet. Um <sighs> But, yeah, credit to him. He's obviously come back from that ACL. Uh, it's taken him a bit of time to find his feet. Those patient super coach players like myself who were basically forced to hold on to him because of other priorities last week, uh, thank you, Bo Fermor, for repaying the faith. You did that intentionally, huh? You just twisted you the were actually He you. actually scored the highest in my uh, second row as well. So thank you very much, Bo Fermor. <laughs> That's... He killed it. And you know what? Last week, too, if I had just stuck with my fucking decision to get rid of Tupanua and not think about what he could do, I would have had a 68 from Cotter. I would have had a 69 from Smithies. I would have had the 50 – well, it was 58. He got downgraded to 50 um, from Pierce Paul. And then I would have had the 70 from uh, from Fermor. So it would have been really nice. But I had to let him go. And I hate myself for it. So – He's in two of my draft sides, though. He's in both of them. So I did go all in on him. So I did get a little bit of it. But at the same time, it really hurt having him go really well in my draft sides and just knowing that I've let him go. So, um, But, to be yeah, at the time when I did look at it thinking, you know what, it hasn't actually been a very bad play. Before he scored the try, it was woeful from him. It was abysmal. Um that try really did just give him all of his points. I think he was on about 20. He made no points in the second half for 20 minutes. I don't care. He got 71. So don't, he got don't 71. stop talking me down. So. I know. No, I, like I'm, I'm stuck with him. Both my draft sides, he's not going anywhere. But I was thinking like, shit, even in my draft teams, I was thinking, fucking hell, this is really bad. I have to look at doing something next week for this. And then he got that 70. So I'm like, oh, I'll keep him. But now I hate myself. So... Yeah, no, nah, good. I'd good to see him. Good to see him doing good things. But the one that got away again, all right. what a shame. All right, that's the team list aspect done and dusted. Now we're going to try and get through this a little bit more rapid fire. Um, this part of the segment, I think we've we've been really dragging these ones on. So let's try and rip through this. The first bit, the captaincy and vice captaincy. I want to talk about. So for our own teams, I'm not going to talk about at the moment what everyone's doing. I just wanted to focus on what we're doing. So at the moment, how I stand with it, I'm going to see on Nico Hines against that South Sydney team. It is a little bit later in on in the weekend, so it gives me time to look at some people with a VC potentially. My VC, I literally can – I toss this up every second at the moment. I change my mind. I'm either going to put the VC on Kalen Ponga or switch it around and put the VC – on Ryan Pappenhausen and bring him in to start. I just still can't wrap my head around what to do there because the Storm are at home against the Bulldogs, who I think that looks sounds like to me a game that Pappenhausen sh- should explode with. But then again, the, the Roosters are a bit depleted and the, that Ponga might be able to, to score some more points again as well. That's also given people a bit of a... A preview as my trades coming up. So <laughs> yeah, well, it seems like you're getting Ponga back. Um, yeah, I don't think you can really go wrong with either. To be honest, I would probably yeah. steer towards the the Pappenhausen against the Dogs thing, just because it's the Bulldogs. But at the moment, you can't knock the form Ponga's in. <laughs> what about yours, your team? To be honest with you, man, I haven't really thought about it too much. Um, I have looked at Heinz. I've looked at Ponga. I've looked at Drinkwater. Um, I'm probably leaning towards Drinkwater. Um, he seems to do really well against the Sharks. So, um, Oh, sorry, against the, the Eels. It's the Sharks. I'm thinking, what am I saying? Um, yeah, I don't know yet, man. He's The previous three games for Drinkwater – Against the Eagles, 122, 117, 113. Yeah, sweet, awesome. And they look worse than ever. So, yeah, I think I might just, you know, go go in all in on him. And as far as the VC goes, well, I can't put it on Ponga. And there's no point putting it on Hines because he plays after him. And I don't really want to loop. So I might just throw it on some random and just commit to drink water. I might just put it on yeah. Val Holmes. And just pair them up. 
Why not? Why, why yeah. not? Trades this week. Um, I've mentioned I am pretty headstrong on doing a boost to fix up this mess that I'm in. Back to back low 900 scores just isn't good enough. I've dropped a lot from where I was, so I need to fix some things up. Um, I've got two options in place that I'll talk to you about quickly. Uh, my first lot, Dill Brown to Zach Lomax via Ethan Strange. Um, so I'll obviously promote him up to starting side with the, the Titans uh, matchup. I think he'll score very, very nicely. Uh, James Desco out for Kalen Ponga. I did say to you guys, when I traded Kalen Ponga out, I wasn't um, against the idea of bringing him back after a few weeks and Look at me now. <laughs> now I've come full circle. Ponga, I love you. Um, don't hate your guts anymore. Uh, Zach Laybutt, I've spoken about as well. Obviously, unfortunate there. ACL gone. So I've moved him off for James Schiller, which freed up a bit of cash as well. This allows me to continue to have 282K in the bank uh, to oh, attack shit. next week with. So that's not bad. Um, not bad at all. But it does mean my front row forwards are very, very weak. I'd be going into that week or this weekend with a May and probably Sam Hughes combination at the moment, which after last week doing bench and bench, I don't know if I want to do. My second Mm. option, James Tedesco to Kalen Ponga, Labart to Schiller, and then this is where I change it up. Farmer Silly, which I've been, this has been a thorn in my head and backside and everywhere in my body basically finally with some cash trade up i can get rid of him and bring in his teammate josh curran with that jewel and he'll go up to my front row forward that leaves me with 87k so i guess it's more so that that lets me balance up my front row a little bit better where i can start now josh curran and, uh, and may i've still got cotter as uh, a second row forward at the moment who i could easily bring that up if i ever needed to but it just means while I had some cash free, I can just get rid of Farmer Silly, which I should never have done. I should never have got him in. He was cheap at the time. He looked okay because he was starting prop for the dogs, but he just has done nothing. Um, see you later. I can finally get rid of him and actually put in someone. This is what I want to start to do now with my side is start to put some of these players in who I feel like I'll have a little bit longer and have a bit more more cash out of. So option one or two there, Jesse, what sticks out to you? I really like option one, to be honest with you. Yeah. Ponga, Lomax, like that's that's solid. Makes sec- uh, makes the center, center wing look really good. Um, if there's a week where Hughes does stealing... come back with another like fifty or something, yeah. it must be this week with no one there. Yeah, like I understand the whole play to get um to get a front rower. Obviously, Curran's great, but I think you're gonna miss Lomax after a while a lot more than you're gonna miss Curran. And what Lomax can do, especially this week. Because they got the Tigers this week. I feel like he could be anything. Over what? That says goodbye to Dylan Brown. Curran can do, but that's the thing. You know, you're losing Dylan Brown in every every which way. But I don't I, – honestly, they're very, very impressive trades, both of them. I'm surprised you still have so much money with the first one too. That's the other thing that stands out to me too, having 200 and something K um, whilst getting Pong and Lomax in. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. I went into solid. this week with a bit of cash. I think I had like two fifty or something at the time. So I did leave myself from last week, and that was the plan with last week: is get some cheapy stuff in to make some moves this week. It's just been forced a little bit with the layboard injury, but hey, I'll take it. Have you got lo- some trades at the moment you're thinking of? Um, there is a couple that I am thinking of. Um, so there's one that I looked at doing. Um, Tupanua and Blaze Talungi out for Isaiah Papali'i and James Schiller. Leaves me with 10K. Um, there was another one that I looked at with Tabita Totola, Dylan Brown, and Tupanua. Via Jules, I can get Ola Kawatu, Eli Katoa, and Schiller and pretty much just solidify my second row for the rest of the year. Um yeah. If I had to, uh, oh, actually, there was another one too that I had made where it was Tupanua. I think it was potentially Taylor May and Dylan Brown, and it involves Eli Katoa, Sean Johnson, moving Luke Brooks down to 5'8, getting Sean Johnson in, 
and putting in Schiller, of course, as the as the pivot, oh. it left me with seven hundred dollars in the bank. Yeah, that's 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 some good trades there. That's yeah. So that's champ moves. That's yeah, scary the thing shit. is, I, I'm I don't like the idea of trading out Dylan Brown and Taylor and May. I still feel like they've got stuff to do and. It's a bit of a waste of a, I feel like they're waste of trade for good players and it's a big boost for no particular reason. But at the moment, for the immediate future, there's going to be a lot of cash lost if I don't get rid of Dylan Brown. And then there's going to be a lot of cash made for Sean Johnson. So, you know, like it kind of outweighs itself because one will drop, one will go up. But like, I know it's a lot to do, but I don't know about it. And then at the same time, like I've been neglecting my hooker position for so long now. I've got Lusick and Levi. I thought if there's a chance that I can get, you know, Eli Katara, I'm talking about these other guys, I can get Harry Grant, I can get Marshall King, I can get any of these guys as well. So I've, I'm at the moment, I'm so uncertain where I'm looking. Um, I don't mind the play to just do Papa Lee and, um, and Schiller, to be honest with you, because it gives me a nice solid second, um, second row with Papa Lee. It means I get to keep Taylor and May. I get to keep Dylan Brown um, just for plays, just for long-term plays in general. Um, but I think if I was to move Dylan Brown out, I don't know if I'd be spending up to get another half in Sean Johnson. I think I might just sort of Go move, maybe move Ethan Strange up, um, put Schiller in and cover the spot and then just bank 500K, you know what I mean? Like, so I've got 150 in the bank at the moment. So... Uh, I do want to be looking at getting Cleary in. If it means doing that, I could just go, yeah, Ethan Strange at 5'8 for now. Trade out one of these guys next week in the, in the center wing, put Strange back there, put Brooks back into 5'8 and just get Cleary in. Maybe even Bostock. I might be able to afford um, Bostock out next week. So, yeah, I don't know what to do yet, to be honest with you, man. Um, it all just depends on... What, I'm, what I want to plan to do because it's going to load a yep. whole lot of shuffling by dual positions um, or and if I want to boost too. I think I do yeah. though. I think I do want to boost this week. Um, I, I think happen. it's, as you mentioned, for those that did end up selling Cleary, I think this is a big week to do some trade um, planning because – you want to plan to get him back in. If he's back next week with that run that I've already mentioned that they've got coming up, he is literally just a must. He 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 could quite easily be the top super coach scorer for the next four to five weeks um, once he's back in fit with that run that they've got. So he, I'll, I'll, that's why for mine, my option one starts to look a lot better as well because that keeps me with that 280K. So that's already a huge head start to next week. Um, we'll just be about obviously next week we'll talk about it more, who to get rid of, etc. when that does come. But uh, let's get into some of the trades uh, that people are making this week. They've all sent in. We'll try and be a little bit – we'll try and get through through it. Um, so Peter Cairns, uh, Instagram message, appreciate you once again, mate. You, you message the page all the time. Really appreciate the support. Um, not happy about these trades, but here we go. Tedesco, Tuapiki, and Tamalolo are out. Curran, Burton, and Schiller are in. Two for the cash grab and Curran because he's going to be my pod. Curran's not a pod. Yeah, there's a lot of people that's going to have, have Curran. Even more so now with the jewel. Curran. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Curran's is pretty hot property in general. So it's it's not a pod. It's not a bad play. Um, I know Burton's got a, a low break even, but he's only going to have that low break even for about a week. And is that a chasing go, points? Yeah. He has is. not been in the picture apart from last no, week. Not at all. Maybe the week beforehand, he scored pretty decent too. But like, if you're getting the first three, four weeks of the season, he was scoring like 20s. Yeah. Like, I just don't like I it. Think strange, I think Strange is a better option at 5 8 than Burton. Yeah. I would say so. Even at the moment. Um, like, that, that game against the Roosters is not going to happen every week it might not even happen ever again so i don't know if you back it though like if you're really set on it and you want to play him long term maybe but i i don't know i i wouldn't do burton been burnt by him in the past too many times 
And for a boost too, like you've got so many more opportunities to do other stuff with. Uh, but I feel like the three players that you are trading out are definite trade outs by all accounts anyway. I think Curran's good, you know, gets you a solid front rower locked in. Um, but it was the fullback. Um, oh, I just clicked out here. Hold on. Um, so Tedesco. Yeah. So he must in. have a duel because he hasn't got a fullback to come in. So he must have moved someone down. Yeah, because he's so bringing in Curran, from... Burton, Schiller, so he must have moved maybe like the Hemmer. Yeah, maybe. C I and K. I I'm not sure. Yeah, if you're getting rid of Tedesco, you got to bring in a fullback. Um, anytime we, we have said it so many times, every we say it so many times. If you have those players like your Hemmers and stuff, you keep them in that wing center position. You don't put them down to fullback. You choose your fullbacks at fullback. So you choose your Edwards, your Pongers. As you've said, Pappy, um, there's a number of fullbacks at the moment. If you're getting rid of Tedesco, which I'd advise a lot of people to do, um, you, you move into to one of those guys. Um, Edwards, obviously not this week. Uh, he would be a play for next week. He looks like he's just going to keep going on his run at the moment. He looks incredible. Um, and with that run coming up, I'm even tempted to look at Edwards next week and make some really big plays. But um, see what happens there. Um, next one up. Chris Ross, another one that just continues to to message the page and have chats about footy. So really appreciate your support. Um, Labor to Schiller. So I've done that. So I'll tick you off with that one straight away, mate. I don't, need, I don't, I don't even need Jesse's thoughts on that one. Um, real super coach players will make that move. Rapana to Manu. Goodness me, I like that one as well. Yeah, and Pete Gura to Jackson Ford. Oh, what, go mate. to Eli That's... Katoa. Get Eli Katoa. He's cheaper than jackson ford if you do that as a trio holy fuck wow that's good trades that's a hell of a setup man good god that's talking setting yourself up now for the long game that's those sorts of trades are talking about which is just what you want to start to do yeah that's man you kill that's that's so good obviously pretty shit go to lose rapana not many people had him to begin with but you've gotten some decent that's points out of him that's a big time pod um, but yeah, getting into Manu, that's solid. Yeah, if I could afford Ford, like Jackson Ford, you can afford anyone pretty much. I think he's just under 700. Man, up to you. Jackson Ford's look fucking red hot at the moment, scoring tries for fun. But yeah, I've got a big Katoa bias personally. I just think he's on for it, especially with the Storm's draw. But man, you cannot go wrong. Um, you've got the th- you got all three, really. You've got um, Katoa, Olakawatu, and Ford. You can pick any of them. They're all around the same price. So, yeah. yeah. If you've chosen Ford, stick with it. I, I don't hate it at all. Great trades. If you, if you can't tell by now, everyone, Jesse actually sleeps with a pillow at the moment that has Katoa's face on it. He's just all obsessed with Katoa at the moment. And I'm all for it. When we have a, when we're trusting our gut about a player, you've got to go all in. And Jesse is all in at the moment with uh, at least Katoa. Love it. Yeah. Um, always. Maddie Owen 1991, same year as my my birthday, mate. So great, thirty two year old there. Uh, <laughs> wisdom here, Katoa in Palacia out. We've already, we just talked about that. That that's great. Um, Schiller in Cobo out. So uh, different one there. I haven't heard the Cobo one yep. yet. Um, but it's, this is good at the moment. It's, it's, we're start, starting to see a lot of different varieties come mm. popping up. So it, it's great. Yeah, no, it's it's a fair move, I would say. Um, I don't really think Cobo is a fantastic option anyway, to be honest with you. Um, but Schiller's obviously a cash grab too, so just think about where you go from him. But, yeah, definitely, I do like the the move. Uh, Sam dot Wiggy, um, I feel like we're – I feel for Sam because we're often a little bit harsh on some of his moves and – I've got to say, I'm I'm going to be again here. Croker for Cookie, Pappy for Garrick. Pappy for Garrick, don't mind that at all. Croker for Cookie, there is there has to be at least ten <laughs> other options in play to go for, other than Lachlan Croker. Yeah. Can you, Jesse? Can you bring it up? Like, what's what's Cookie currently on? He'd be on what? Still five fifty six hundred k or something? Six hundred. Uh... I would say so. Let me just. Sorry, I'm just quickly getting. You literally just. 
Just go for. All right. So <laughs> highest. Okay. So Damian Cook is six hundred and eighteen thousand. So if you're going from Garrick down to Pappenhausen, he has some cash. He could go any hooker he wants. I reckon. Surely. Go Robson. Go go Grant. Set yourself up. Go one of them. So Ruben Garrick is six ninety six. So he's basically seven hundred k. Um, Pappenhausen is seven thirty five. So it's it's pretty sideways. You know what I mean? You're not going that far away. Um, I'm sure you can find thirty forty odd k. If Croker at four hundred nineteen is your option, why is he your option? He just scored twenty three points. He's averaging thirty six. I don't get it. I don't get it. Unless you're up against me this weekend, Sam, or something, you're trying to be nice and give me a chance. Like, I know I've been scoring poorly. You don't need to be too nice to me. <laughs> um, just heads up. Like, go any <laughs> other hooker. Don't yeah, go just, Lachlan Croker. Just go anyone else. Go Lussick, even. Like, it's it's not great. Go down. Go no, Jaden Braley. Go <laughs> even further down. At least Jaden Braley's probably going to no, score him. Set but yourself like, up. I, if you're there, Croker like, would be his main there, guy. If you're if you're a cook to go to Croker, unless you want to bank 200k for some reason, just go up. Just find a little bit more. Find 40, yeah. 50k. Get Coruscant. He's the closest to Damian Cook. Um, or find another 15k and get Marshall King, who's fantastic. Um, be- Aussie, Aussie hip hop collector, Dean Young. Oh, here we go. He's, he's doing a boost this week. Um, Dean Young, T, T May, and T May with a laughing face. You've confused the shit, but it looks sounds like both. Um, for DCE, Schiller, and Hosking. Um, I don't know about trading. I still out think Terrell the rooster. May. I think the rooster May um is still a keeper for now. I yeah. still think he's got like last weekend. I don't know what happened there. They I think it was because they lost opted too out many of, players. Yeah. 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 It wasn't a necessity. Like, they didn't choose to play him 22 minutes because that was the game plan. I think the the hand was forced into trying to just make do with what they could. You know what I mean? Like, they were shuffling players everywhere just to fill a team. At one point, they had 11 players out. Like, it's, it's a one-off. It's a massive one-off game. Um Every other game of the season so far, he's played more front row minutes than any of the other forwards have yeah. off the bench too. So, yeah, I, I think just for the Stick the style him. of game that they were doing, I don't know. He just seemed to sit out of it for whatever reason. Oh, but... can I... With Zach Hosking, I just feel like if you don't have him by now, you sort of missed the boat and there's no – like he's just too much whiteheads floating there still. We don't know what's going to – he might be back next week and you're trading him in now. Yeah, and hundred break even as well over. for Hosking. I don't think you should be getting him in. No, I don't think so either. If you have him and you still held him, fair enough. Um, not to say Hosking won't come out and probably score 80, 90 points, but again, it's just like you've always got that risk of him just getting benched all of a sudden. Um, don't know when Whitehead will be back through because I think it's a bit of an unknown injury for him, but. Yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't rush to get him in, not with a hundred break even, thinking he could be gone next week. Yeah. No. Mark Coulson, um, Teddy and Dom Young out. Ponga and Rocco Berry in. There's a pod. Rocco mm. Berry. I have him in my draft. So I've been very pleased with Rocco Berry, who's flying under the radar in a star studded backline at the moment. Um, not doing absolute ceiling stuff by any means, but he's he's going by um, doing enough for, for especially a draft team for a classic. I did say as a pod. I don't know if I'd be going for him now in classic. How I feel like there's some other players around him that just give you a bit more. Yeah, he's four hundred and twenty-eight. Um, four twenty-eight center wing. I don't know who's around him, to be honest with you, at that price. Can I have a quick squeeze? While Jury you do Hutch that, I'm going to make a point. 427. While, while you 
while you look, yeah. I want to make this point with some stuff. It's getting to that stage at the moment. There, there is a lot of players out injured. There's a lot of players like on buys and stuff. Um, suspensions are in place. There's also the the way with Supercoach, and I've done this this week with one or two of my players where they're not playing. They're not going to lose me any cash this week. I can fill um, my team to score hopefully enough points and, and be a dangerous team. So I've decided to leave them for now. I yeah. feel like we'd say, just for instance, this one, we'd like Dom Young, for instance. If you have enough to just have, like, for me, how I see it this week, because I've got two Raiders, I'm play, actually going to be playing them this week because I think they'll score enough to warrant starting in my back line. So I'm going to do do that. I'm going to go, I've got Schiller and then I've got Strange both to start for me. That means I can leave um, someone in my backs who's out, but they're not going to lose me any money, and I can make that trade next week if I like. The way the reason why I'm saying that, for mine, you can either get Rocco Berry in right now and make that trade happen, but for me, if this was only me, and trust me, guys, my last two weeks, don't take anything I say, <laughs> throw it out the door after this. I'd wait for this trade because we've I've, the, the Penrith Panthers run coming up has something about May written all over it. I'd be yeah. actually waiting to go for May. Well, there's that. Yeah, you could. Um, you can bank a little bit too. There's not a great deal that's floating around. Um, you've got Bronson Sherry, uh, who's a fair bit cheaper. Um, Ethan Strange, I imagine you already have him. Schiller, if you don't have him already, you know, you probably should look to get him in. Taylor May is right there. You know what I mean? I, I'd be pretty keen to do that. Obviously, Rocco Berry scored quite well in a couple of games, but, yeah, I don't know. It's just not very consistent enough, really, is it? If it's not it necessary. Yeah, it could be. Um, yeah, I don't want to say Jesse Arthurs, but he's a little bit dearer. Decent run coming. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't feel like I'd be making that move to get Rocco Berry of all players in, but. You know, stranger things have happened. I I agree. Um, Bouncy, Egan, Schiller, and Hines in, and that's it, brother. When you send these in, please, I really appreciate your message in the page. But can you let us know who you, you got out as well, so we can help you Wade a Egan. little bit and let you know. So, um, Wade Egan's a definite. Um, what a game on the weekend. I just mm. we continue to say it with Egan. He just. <laughs> I wince every time he like runs yeah. the ball and stays down for longer than like a second. I just go, oh no, oh no, it. just wait for something to happen. He would yeah. be for mine just that biggest headache and worry that I don't want to have in my life when I'm watching footy and I have enough going on trying to like run a page and stuff. I don't need Egan in my life. Yeah, with the amount of shit that we have to cop every single week with team lists and how many players we're dropping. For Wade Egan to still be there each week baffles me. <laughs> baffles me. The yeah. First one I expect to be out. Yeah. No, uh, no. I agree. Too much of Brian, a yeah. Brian. Yeah. Brian. Bell. Uh, Forty four. Hosking to Curran. Teddy to Ponga. Like them both. Ooh, Got nothing to say. Yeah. That. Very nice. Like him. Sully's underscore ventures. Gary. Oh, it's just the one change this week. I wish I was in your boat and you could. Do this. He's, he obviously set himself up quite nicely. Garrick for Talungi. I don't mind that Murray Talungi play. Yeah, I'm, I'm, imag- I'm imagining it's Murray Talungi. The way it's spelled, it's Murray Talungi. Yeah. Yeah. Garrick to him. Yep. How long's Garrick out for? A week? Oh, I think it's 11 days. So, I mean. So he's back next week. Yeah. Don't do it. Don't know. Oh yeah, well, he, yeah. Unless he's desperate it. and he has absolutely yeah. no one in his backs, but it's at the what, same like, time, like you uh, trade someone else out. Yeah, unless it's the whole like, okay, I'll get my cash now so I can get ready for Cleary next week, if that's the potential. Or if you're worried about mm-hmm. his massive break even and you want to get off him, like I get that too. Um Yeah, I don't know. I feel like the the Cowboys winger run potentially could have dried up now. Because they had the yeah. Dragons, the Titans, you know what I mean? Like, they've had a good run so far. I've got Talungi in one of my draft teams. And um, he's been great. I've been loving what I've been getting out of him. Same time, I'm not super fresh hot and see what's coming up for him. But, um, 
You got a lot of money to spare, though. You know, you could go pretty much anywhere from Garrick down. 700k. You can get Manu if you wanted Manu. I don't mind that. Just get a Shiller. Just have some big just balls. Fucking, just go yeah, exactly. Go to Shiller and then come go back massive. to Garrick. Yeah. <laughs> may as well. Um, Maybe get 300k out of it. Yeah, why not? Uh, MBSG CG 2023. None. No trades for the next four rounds at least. Save them for the back end. I always run out. Look, that's always good in theory, and I want to say some trades, trust me, but my team has shut the bed, so I need to make some changes. I'm jealous if your team is still at the moment sitting pretty well done. So. Um, I'll be making trades this week and I'll probably be using a boost. So <laughs> I am the exact opposite. Burn them. Uh, Just trade. trade he, yeah, trade, I'm trade, burning. Trade. Trades are out. I've still got 30 on them. I'm loving life. Yeah. When um, I hit mid 20s, I'll start freaking out. Yeah. Screenshot this, guys, because in by about round 18, you'll probably see me sweating and crying on camera. Uh, Ethan Skip, Hughes, Laybutt, and Tua Picky out. Crichton, Caesar, and Gray in. What Hughes sorry, is this? What? what Hughes is this, please? Because I have either a... Hughes is a bad trade. Yeah, out. Hughes lay but to a picky out. Angus Crichton, Caesar, and Gray in. Now you don't need to jump straight away on Gray to start with. Just wait. Let it, let's see what happens. Um, to be honest, I don't even know if he will score good at the moment. The way the South Sydney Rabbitohs are playing. I wouldn't do it. Hughes, it looks like to me the way these trades are shaping out, it's it was Jerome Hughes. It's Jerome, and with the storm run Caesar. at the no, don't trade out Jerome Hughes. He's flying. Yeah, no, for like no, yeah. no. for Caesar. Nah, look, I I don't I don't like it personally. I yeah. wouldn't. Look to trade any of them out. Obviously, Torpiki's got to go. To go Torpiki to Schiller, make your money next week, and then work it out. Don't trade out Jerome Hughes at the moment for anyone really, unless it's Cleary or Hines. Probably Cleary. And um, Angus Crichton. Well, you can probably do that in an easy one-way swap. You know what I mean? Like you don't need to be trading out anyone massive to get Crichton, and he's only four hundred k. So. Hmm. Yeah. A couple of yeah. Facebook ones to end it. Marcus Nicholson, Garrick for Schiller, as I had no reserve to swap in. Mate, Garrick for Schiller. we just spoke about it. So cash money, you're there it up is. Some cash. <laughs> there you go. Love it. Um, yeah. Shannon Giles, May May Brooks out for Crichton, Manu, Schiller. I feel like it's <laughs> May to, to Crichton. I feel like you got more headaches with Crichton than you do with May at the moment. Like the way that back row has been for the Roosters the last the first five weeks. Yeah, he might get eighty yeah. this week, but who's to say he won't drop to the bench next week or something? It's well, that's I it. still don't want to be a part of it. Yeah, that's the only thing that's kind of not like locked me in hard either. Like I really do want the best Angus Crichton we can see. Everyone does, you know. I mean, if you can get this. Absolute gun, 70-point average second rower for 400K. Like, you're laughing, but I don't know if he's going to be that. I don't know. If last week wasn't like it was, it would have been nice to see what to expect out of him. But unfortunately, the way the game pans out, we have no reference for anything for what they're expecting in that forward minutes. Like, we saw Terrell may not play. They could have. We saw, like, Tupanua was in the centres because they were missing a player here and... Crichton, obviously, was the one that sort of capitalised on it because he, he played through the middle at the same time too. So, obviously, there's rotation there for him. Um, if they had players to to actually come off the interchange and rotate with him, Crichton probably doesn't probably play 80 minutes. I don't know. And, like, I don't want to be getting him in and having another fucking headache with a 60-minute second rower who just sort of doesn't have the output there that you need. But 100%. Yeah. My, that's the thing, like the way that his price is at the moment and the way that his sort of break evens worked out, he might only go up 30, 40 K if he has a really good game. And I'd be more than happy to still get him at 450. Like more than happy. It would not bother me at all paying that much for him. 
thinking, oh, man, I wish I got saved 30, 40K. Like, if we're expecting 70s out of him, fuck, he's going to catch up pretty quick. It doesn't really matter. So, yeah, I'm not going to rush to it, but don't trade out Jerome Hughes, please. Yeah, I, I, I 100% agree. Guys, that's all we've got time for. Um, I'll quickly just make a little bit of a shout-out. Obviously, a lot of you have seen now, we've got the subscription base service out now it's less uh, less than a dollar a week um 3.99 a month uh on our facebook group so just go onto our facebook page there's a button there to hit the subscriber hub uh goes a long way of just helping support the page moving forward helping us in, um get uh better equipment um help grow and reach others as well um and create a, a much bigger family than we already have here at the league of inches um family uh basically so really appreciate everyone that jumps on everything will stay the same in terms of the free stuff um you just get some added benefits and you get um gets going to draw every fortnight um to win a double pass to a game of your choice for that following week which is pretty cool um we'll have a lot of super coach stuff on there um in the weeks to come in jess will sort of talk through our plans and stuff each and every week answer all of your questions around super coach it'll be on the on demand basically so it's really some really cool stuff there um good luck this week it looks like to me so far going off the trades and stuff and what people are making there's a lot of variety out there which is really cool obviously Schiller looks like a guy that people are thinking is almost a must to get in um but apart from that there's also the thought of planning for next week when someone like nathan clear looks like he will return so a lot of big things coming up jesse the champ is running away at the moment so i need to just cling on and try and come back um, you see in the press conference yesterday, uh, this morning, uh, I will be back. Um, Love it. We've had that, that bonding golden. session um, yesterday, so we're, we're fighting fit here and um, we'll be back bigger than ever. So good luck with your trades, guys. Jesse, good luck on the weekend. Not too much luck, but I do see hope you, you keep going up. It's it's good for the podcast with your ranking skyrocketing. Yeah, you too, man. <laughs> Hopefully you can um, get back into the, the top 20s with us and we both hold it at least and just keep moving into the 10. That's the that's the goal so far. I've got a big decision to make on what trades to make here. So, guys, yeah. I'm off to bed, but um, not yet anyway. I've got to upload this. But, yeah, thanks for in- listening. Please hit that like, subscribe, all that sort of jazz as well. goes a long way helping support the page. We'll catch you tomorrow night, Wednesday night, 8.30, for our live weekly Talking Points show. 